Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is No Harm. Beloved family, our text says, Then David also went out of the cave and yelled to Saul, My master the king. Saul looked back and David bowed out of respect. David said to Saul, Why do you listen when people say David wants to ruin you? Look, today your own eyes have seen that the Lord handed you over to me in the cave. But I refuse to kill you. I spared you saying, I will not lift a hand against my master because he is the Lord's anointed. May the Lord judge between me and you. May the Lord take vengeance on you for me, but I won't lift a hand against you. As the old proverb goes, evil deeds come from evil doers, but I won't lift a hand against you. 1 Samuel 24, 8 to 13. Here's the picture. David and his trusted band of brothers are on the run for their lives. King Saul and his army are hunting down David to kill him and all those in his company. Saul attempted to murder David on several occasions, even at the dinner table. He took a spear and threw it at David's head. David probably told his son about this incident, which makes sense because Solomon said in the Proverbs, when you sit down to eat with the ruler, observe carefully what is before you and put a knife to your throat if you are given to appetite. Do not desire his delicacies, for they are deceptive food. Proverbs 23, 1-3. I can only imagine as David was eating at King Saul's table, he was staring at him, wishing him dead. The king's delicacies indeed was deceptive food. In our opening text, David lets King Saul know he could have taken his life, but he respected and reverenced God too much to touch his anointed. Even though Saul had turned against God, David still knew that Saul was called and anointed by God. Imagine David and his men are fearful of their lives and one day they are in the back of a cave and in walks King Saul, all alone and vulnerable. His 3,000 soldiers left outside and here is the one who was trying to kill them. No doubt they believed that God delivered Saul to them and they desired to take his life in order to save their own. I would venture to say that you and I would probably do the same thing and believe that God would hand them into our hands as well. Excited, David's soldiers said to him, This is the day the Lord spoke of when he promised you, I will hand your enemy over to you and you can do to him whatever you think best. So David snuck up and cut off a corner of Saul's robe. But immediately, David felt horrible that he had cut off the corner of Saul's robe. The Lord forbid, he told his men, that I should do something like that to my master or lift my hand against him because he is the Lord's anointed. So David held his soldiers in check by what he said and he wouldn't allow them to attack Saul. Saul then left the cave and went on his way. 1 Samuel 24, 3-7. When Saul was anointed king, the scripture says he prophesied before the Lord. David realized that if he harms Saul, God may take offense to it. He says, do no harm. Even though they may try to harm you, leave it to God to repay them for their evil. David says to Saul, evil deeds come from evil doers. That's like the wisdom of Forrest Gump. Stupid is as stupid does. David knew that no one could take vengeance like God, for I will repay, says God. David had multiple opportunities to kill Saul, and both times he refused to kill his arch enemy or allow his men to do so. Why, you may ask? These accounts reveal something we need to learn about anger, pride, revenge, humility, and submission to the Lord's will. It contains some profound lessons taught against the background of violence. If David and his men had indeed killed Saul, he and his 600 men would have to face Saul's 3,000 men outside the cave. Could David have gotten away with killing Saul and claiming the throne? 
Probably, but David's refusal to attack Saul isn't based on strategic or even moral grounds. It is based on the profound respect that David has for Almighty God. The fear of the Lord God Yahweh, David reasoned, that forbid him to rebel against Saul like Saul rebelled against God. David let Saul live, even though David said, The Lord delivered you to me, yet I can do you no harm. It was David who would write in Psalm 135, Do not touch my anointed ones, and do my prophets no harm. The lesson that David teaches his men, and you and I this morning, is that we need to fear and reverence God, and honor his word all the time, not just when it is convenient for us. I know this word is for me. I have to be mindful that even though someone might not be currently in the will of God for their lives, that does not mean that God didn't anoint or appoint them. So I need to be careful of what I say or do to that anointed person. Even though it may appear that God approve it, touch not God's anointed and do them no harm. Much love.